partners with Jack, whom you've met for how long? Uh, since 19, uh, sorry, 95 for partners. 1995. And these guys are the technical aspect. Jack and Nick are the business, business administrative aspect. And between the four of them, they just do a lot of interesting things, and none more interesting than this. So this is the induction forge that he has modified and built. He's renowned for that sort of thing. And uh, we're going to watch them bend 5 8 plate. 5 8 AR400. 5 8 AR400, and it looks like about a two inch radius on a four, four foot length. Yeah. Ouch. All right, let's see how that works. You said 320 tons? Well, whatever you know. I'll stop 280. 280 on that. This one.
480 volts, 60 amps. Nice short lead. So Jim Sr. is a very practical guy, right? And his son is growing up to be just a thrasher of an iron worker, as you would expect. But, but Jim Jr. also is seduced by blacksmithing a little bit. Am I overstating that, Jim? That you're seduced a little bit by blacksmithing, the romance of it, or is it just business for you? Oh, yeah, definitely romance, yeah. It, there's some romance, isn't it? I, I know that because he brought over an old axe head, but was that a Winchester brand? Yeah. A Winchester brand axe that your grandfather had had? Yeah, it was my grandfather's and some worker he had hired it smash it up using it as a splitting wedge. Yeah, it was deformed, and I tried to fix it in my blacksmith shop, but it was pretty far gone. Yeah. So, anyway, so young Jim here has been on the hunt for an anvil. And I just want you guys, once you hear the details of this, you're going to simultaneously weep and rejoice because he got what may be the ultimate anvil bargain. I mean, it just may be, and I know, have learned of a few of these. So tell us a story, Jim. What happened? How long did you look Give us the circumstances around I'm, finding this thing. Right. I've been casually looking on Facebook, Craigslist, Marketplace, whatever. and For how long? Uh, for as long as I've been doing this. You for know, as long as he's been alive, pretty much. 20 years. Yeah, since 05. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, and because the old man's kind of a penny pincher, he's never really interested in paying. Could that be true, Jim, that you're a penny pincher? What's that? Could that be true that you're a penny pincher? I mean, could that <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, marching forward. <laughs> Never really interested in paying yeah. market premium for an anvil. Yes. Yeah. So we're always looking for the deal. And uh, so one day I was hopped on Facebook Marketplace, just seeing what was on, because I'm always looking for a good deal and on anything. And this anvil right here happened to be on there for $500. Guys, I see this thing on Facebook and I message them. And at the time it was pretty late in the day. And I knew it was a smoking deal, so I asked if they'd be willing to hold it for me till morning, because they were a couple hours out away on the on the coast. And they said, "Sure thing, no problem." So early the next day, I grabbed a buddy and uh, ran out there with a engine jack for a car, and we uh, got out there and loaded that thing up. When you got there, were there guys waiting on you? There were some guys waiting on us. Like yeah. in the driveway, offering more oh, money. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no guys. Yeah, no, no one was waiting to pick it up. Okay. They they held it for us, and I think they took it off the market that evening. So l let me just jump in here, guys. This is a Fisher Norris. Okay. Now, you're probably familiar with Fisher Norris. They they were the last man standing in domestic anvil manufacture, really, because they developed a system for casting on top of a hardened steel plate and making it stick. So these things are quiet, they're tough, they work very well, and this one comes with a factory base. Now I've not seen this before, but look at that. That's a suitable base for a 700 pound anvil. They didn't make very many any bigger than that. So here's the upshot. Don't stop looking, you never know. Now you shouldn't expect to find a 700 pound Fisher Norris on Facebook for 500 bucks you know, three miles from, three hours from where you live. But you might expect to find something that you'll be proud to own, that you'll be able to work on for a long time, and that your friends will be quite envious of, actually. So I've told you guys that I moved back to Oregon in 1994. And a couple of years after that, I backed away from logging full time and got a contractor's license and realized I was gonna have to ride it into the sunset as a contractor. And so it was about 90, you said that you and Jack went into partners 95. in 95. So it was probably about 98, 1998 or so. Jack called me up, brought me over, introduced me to Jim. And Jim had this wild idea about raising the roof. Now Jim raises the roof in a lot of different venues, but he was gonna do it right here in his very own machine shop, which you had fairly recently purchased, purchased and wrapped your arms around a real, yep. a real thing. Yep. This was a 14 foot eave on this building, which is what, 60 by 90 or something? Yeah, you can see the original. Yeah. So if you look, you can see the original roof line on that gable end. And they weren't happy with that because they needed big overhead crane capacity. So they said to me, Scott, 
can you raise the roof on this building while we continue to fabricate in here? And I said yes to the first part and no to the second part. So how did, how did, help me remember, how did that go, Jim? What did we do? We cleared out the bay and uh, we started stripping the tent off. Uh, we had a crew that was experienced in uh, construction. You had Jerry, who had been working yep. for Jack Mathis. Right. Yep. He and I spearpointed that, and, yep. then, and then we picked up a couple of the guys that we needed. Yep, and so we unscrewed the roof uh, and fabricated 12 or 11 foot jacks. I 11 think. foot extensions 11 foot on jacks. the columns. Yep. And it was, so it was pretty handy remodeling a steel fabricated building next door to a fully functional fabrication shop. Yeah, right? yeah so all the parts we made ourselves. We draw a picture, make some of these. Okay, right. next thing I knew, over they'd come. Right, right. And uh, so we put the jacks in, took the original girders or so beams, them. call them a beam. Yeah, the beams. And uh, so let's, let, let, let's drill a little deeper. Yeah. We would start on one bay, right. pull down one beam. Put in the column extensions. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then lift that beam back up yeah. and perch it on the top. Yep. And we had one extended boom port lift. I believe so. We yes. had a couple man baskets. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Well, we had a couple weeks or something. Yeah, it did take more than a couple weeks. Yeah. It was a quick project. It's the middle of winter. Yeah, middle of winter, Oregon winter. <laughs> Raised the roof on this thing 14 feet, and since then he's put all the cranes in and turned it into arguably the premier fabrication shop with maybe the widest range of. Uh, of available services in this part of the state. And uh, darn it, I'm just glad to know you, Jim, and I'm frankly a little surprised you're still alive. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, Go ahead. As, Go ahead. as an addendum to that, Scott also did our cement work for us. That's right. He put this rear apron out here, and we had the difference between our main fabrication building and this building is about a foot, and so he poured. A braid. Yeah, a braid. So he did a blend of graded cement to a flat cement for our tool room area between the buildings, and so it became all one building. And then we put a new roof, just the roofing over yeah, yeah. on that other thing, yeah. which was pretty cool. Yeah. As it turns out, you can lay two by four purlins over the top of the existing old roof, yep. old roof yep. roll out insulation in between, and throw new, new roofing right over the top while they're working and keep them fairly dry right. in the middle of maybe the next winter. Probably. probably yeah, yeah. Like Anyhow, yeah. it's been a pleasure, Jim. It's been a, you've yeah, been a blessing in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for bringing yeah. me yeah. over here. And you're bringing your boy up just yep. right. All right. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.